Channel 10. Joe, it, it's not his fault we're not married yet. As a matter of fact, we did make it to the altar once, and, and we'll get there again. We were thinking about St. Timothy's, you know, where I was confirmed. And the reason that uh, we're not married is because at, at the wedding, uh, my dead husband showed up. Yeah, uh, and he wouldn't even give Pauline a divorce until last week. Uh, but we plan to be married as, as well before the baby comes. Right. We were thinking Francesca, <sighs> if it was a girl. Or, or not. Um, <sighs> It's probably a boy, anyway. Who's conceived in love? And I want you to know that I love Joe very much, and there's nothing I want more in this world than to be married to him and raising our family together. So, do we have your blessing there, Franny? Where is Sophia Teresa? Where is your sister? You know, um, you don't have to wait with me or anything. I'm gonna be fine. Who's waiting? Maybe I just like your cappuccino. <laughs> but you made it. Yeah, but you showed me how. Tell you one thing, though. Your big brother Joe's gonna be in big trouble if you gotta go back to New York. No way he's gonna be able to run this place by himself. Let's hope Aunt Franny agrees. Yeah, let's hope. You know, uh... Joe, uh, really appreciated you staying late last night to... Help us clean up. I didn't do it for Joe. I should call. The news is good news. Right? You think? Yeah, it means he's getting to her. Uh-uh. You don't know uh, Zia Francesca. You know, come on. I, I really don't want to waste time talking about Zia Francesca. No? Okay. Then let's talk about how come you kissed me last night. Going somewhere? Yeah, going to Oh. Uh, with who? Grant. It's 18, we're number one. Oh, I see. Well, clear up this mess, you're not going anywhere. We'll do it later. No, we'll do it now. And then I will decide if I'm going to take you to play hockey this afternoon. I don't want to go with you. I want to go with Grant, and I want to go now. See, if you keep this up, you're not going anywhere. I hate you. You know, I really hate it when you say that. I don't care! I just feel like we've imposed on Grant enough, all right? He didn't mind. I just don't want you to see him today. Can you understand that? You don't have to see him. He's coming. The answer is me. no. No. Now clean up the stuff or I'm going to throw it away. I mean it. It's all your fault. You said he'd always be here to play with me. Watch your step. Watch your step. Come on, come on. You shouldn't be doing this. Like it or not, Mr. Hutchins, you broke the law. You shouldn't be doing this. You know, you could... You, you couldn't be more wrong. Wrong! Show me the law that can bar a father from his son. I mean, you hold me here against my will. I'm done now. Unlawful trespass, Mr. Hutchins. Resisting arrest. I, I shall continue to resist the system that will allow men like Grant Harrison to walk free. They like him. They like him. You should be in here. Not me. You. That's what you get for not letting me play hockey with Grant! I have enough of you! Now stop it! I hate you! Hi, um... 
My name is Vicki Hudson. Dr. Parsons is my pediatrician. He gave me the number of a family therapist once. I was wondering if you could uh, connect me. That's it. Thank you. Ah, uh, good morning. Uh, I need a little help here. I, I just hit my kid. Pretty unstable. Even Rachel's concerned. She came to me, you know, asked my advice. <laughs> of course, I'm hardly in a position. But I gave her the name of a hospital. She's very concerned. I see. What's he done now? Caretaker found him in a cemetery sleeping on Ryan's grave again. It's very sad. We see that. That's what I mean. I mean, it was below freezing last night, wasn't it? Yeah. He's risking his life. Yeah. Well, you were at the Corey Christmas party. Yeah. You know, he spent the greater part of the evening on the floor watching a toy train set go round and round. He's obsessed. I, I think he's over the edge. I well, think I'll go off and right as I hear you, love. I'll pursue it with my last breath. Carl? Carl. Darling, what happened? Ma'am, criminal trespassing is a serious offense. There was no trespass. We, we paid for that cemetery plot. The dirt is mine. The bones, the bones of my poor sons. He was in the cemetery again. Darling. They dragged me from there like, like a coward thief. Mr. Hutchins, you can't be breaking into private property. He's right, darling. Zion isn't the owner. Corpse? But who? Stop this. Who made him a corpse? Stop. Stop it, please. This isn't doing you any good, and it certainly isn't doing me any good. Darling, I know this is difficult for you, but you've got to let him go. Never. Never. Please. Never, never, never. Help, please help him. He's sick. We both know. He's ill. We both know. Ryan will never rest. Not until justice is served. Muffin? Uh, you baked these muffins, Christina? I didn't bake them. But Joe is teaching me how to make some of his favorite dishes. Mm -hmm. She makes a terrific sauce. Peppers and onions, just like Pop bakes. What are you talking about? That's my recipe with the fennel seed. Right. Well, there you have it. You two have something in common already, huh? Uh, to tell you the truth, Aunt Franny, uh, may I call you that? Can I stop you? Uh, the truth is I'm not much of a cook, although I do enjoy it, and I am learning. Mm -hmm. Paulina has a terrific job. She works for the local television station producing programs. You work? Well, things have changed, Aunt Franny. Um, these days, most women work out of the house. Don't talk to me like I'm an ignorant fool, Giuseppe. I live in New York City. I know what goes on, which is not to say I approve. So, you say you want to marry my nephew. You say you're already pregnant with his child. Tell me something, Paul, that Miss Career Woman. It's Paulina. <laughs> Do you have any idea what it takes to make a home, to take care of the bambini, to keep a family together in this day and age? I understand your concern. And I want you to know that Joe and this baby are my top priority. Uh, being a mama is a full-time job. Well, I plan to take a leave of absence from work. KBAY, the station where I work, is co-owned by my brother, see, so I can take as much time off as I want. And Pauline has always wanted to have kids, <sighs> right? I mean, it's one of the first things we ever talked about. And then when the baby gets a little older, I can get a part-time job and get a sitter. You would leave a helpless infant with a stranger? Uh, well, see, uh, Sophia, that's it. Yeah. That makes it perfect why she should stay here with us. Yeah. She can help take care of the baby. Hmm. Gee, do you think she's going to give us her blessing? Uh, Aunt Franny, uh, where are you going? Hey, 
Hey, Morgan. It's good to have you back. Good to be back. I'm just surprised Rita Madison stepped aside for you to be chief of staff again. No, she didn't exactly step aside. It took a little shoving. <laughs> That's good. If anybody deserved a good swift kick, it was Rita. <laughs> How was your first time back in the OR? It was good. We're a little short-staffed, but we got the tumor. Good. Mm -hmm. Where's Courtney, by the way? Wasn't she supposed to assist Dr. Levin on laparoscopy? Uh, yeah, she had a family uh, emergency. Hi, Dr. Hudson. Hi, how are you? Thank, you? Thank you. Thank you very much. Good to be back. Well, I must be confused, because I just told John that you had a family thing this morning. Is it tomorrow? Oh, uh, yeah. No, no, actually, it's this weekend. Um, it, it won't conflict. Yeah, that's me. Okay. Well, listen, uh, I'll catch up with you later. All right. Good luck with Lack Broskby. Oh, thanks. Welcome back. Thank you. See ya. Bye. You told him I had a family emergency? You're late. I'm five minutes late, and you feel you have to lie for me? Oh, hey, I'm sorry. I naturally assumed you were out cold on the floor of your apartment because Andrew bashed a beer bottle over your head or something. You wouldn't... Uh, you wouldn't bash Oh, don't tell me you wouldn't do it. I've seen the beatings you've taken and for a lot less than standing him up on Christmas. He was okay about that. Great. He was okay about it this time. What about next time? Oh, Morgan, we had such a nice time when we were stranded here at Christmas. Why are you getting upset Look, now? I'm not upset. You've made your choice to be with Andrew, which is fine. Only I can't stop worrying about you. I'm afraid for you, and it's affecting my work. So look, either you gotta go, or I gotta get a job somewhere else, because I cannot work with you anymore. It's driving me absolutely nuts. Right? That you, that you kissed me. I mean, people do that all the time. They, you know, midnight. Unless there was some other reason. Like what? You tell me. Uh, actually, it's, 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 it's really no big deal. It was to me. I kissed you because I had... Because I had to. I mean, you know, we were brushing up against each other all night in the kitchen. And we were slinging pasta. And it's hot. And it's steamy and... Pasquale and I just couldn't stop looking at you. And I had to, just had to touch you. And, uh, taste you. What did I uh, taste like? Buttercream. You're telling me I tasted like a cannoli. I'm saying you taste like that whole meal we cooked and, and New York. You taste like New, New York, Sophia, and, and how you lied to me and that plate that you broke and, and, and how scared you looked when I, when I caught you trying to sneak it back and... You taste like you. You know? You. You know, I'm over 18. And if, uh, if Joey can't convince her, you know, which she probably has because he's her favorite nephew. Right. But even if he hasn't, she, I, she can't force me to go back to New York with her, you know? Because th that would be like, that would be like kidnapping, right? Yeah. I mean, wouldn't it? It would be like kidnapping. Take a good look. This is what you wanted. No. Brown eyes, brown hair, medium build. The cops will want details, you know? I don't care what they want, as, as long as you don't hurt me. Are you trying to bargain with me, little girl? You know, you should have never pulled my ski mask off last night. I didn't mean it. It just happened. I, I do dumb things sometimes. Ask anybody. Could you please just untie this? It really hurts. You think I care? Please, I just want to go home. So you'll go home whenever your family comes up with the money. They probably don't even know that I'm gone yet. Little rich girl. They probably got the National Guard out looking for you. Don't count on it. Half the time, no one's home. The other half, I'm not a priority. God, you get cozy with the captain, but he won't protect you. I'll flush you out. I'll crush you for your sins. I'll wring you out to dry. And then I'll cast you on the wind. Not the color of enough. Please, you've got to let him out of here. He's ill. Please let him out. Mrs. Hutchins. He's sick. He's burning up with a fever. You don't want him to die in a holding cell. All right. 
I'll see what I can do. Thank you. Okay? You know, I suggested to Rachel that she consider psychiatric help. She wanted to wait. Which, of course, is understandable. It's an enormous step, given the circumstances. Do you think Carl is dangerous? Of course he's dangerous. <laughs> Goodness. Well, look at his history. I have. He's usually managed to evade the law. Unlike you. What, what, what are you saying? It's just that you can never really predict what someone will do. Well, perhaps I'm overreacting. But all I know is what happened to my mother. And on the surface, she was very controlled. Now, Carl is... He's mad as hell. And I can't really say that I blame him. Yes, and I understand that he's upset. It's, it's natural to be upset about the loss of your son. But why is he angry about me? You understand? That's where his, that's where his confusion comes in. Excuse me, Captain. Yeah. Mr. Hutchins seems to be running some kind of fever. And his wife wants to take him to the hospital. All right, let him go with a warning. Any more nocturnal visits to the cemetery and those charges stick. Okay. Yeah, thanks, Smith. You're welcome. What did he say? Well, he okayed it, but with a few conditions. I'll talk to him. <laughs> He was out again all night, and he's got a fever. Oh, no, I'm sorry. It's, it's, not, uh, it's not what I told you, is it? I mean, that's not what set him off, that I was there that night, Brian was shot. I didn't tell him. Good. God, I think that's wise. You're supposed to tell McNamara that you were there that night, and that I'm getting my memory back? Well, I'm sure Captain McNamara will be happy to discuss it with you. We've spent more than an hour discussing it ourselves. You told him you were there? Yes, I did. <laughs> not, not that it's going to change anything. And Captain McNamara understood why I didn't come forward. Rachel, I'm, I'm, I made a serious mistake not telling. But it was a nightmare seeing my mother shoot Ryan. A nightmare I'll never forget. Now, I've, I've asked Captain McNamara to withhold any further information, any further investigation, that to keep it quiet. I certainly wouldn't want to upset poor Carl unnecessarily. Poor Carl is my husband. You don't need to make it sound as though he's a mental case. Of course not. I, I, I understand what you're going through, that's all. And you don't have to patronize me. Yes, he is distressed, and he has good reason. His son was killed, and he's grieving. And if his grieving doesn't suit you, it's too bad. You get away from her, Papa. She's not your mother. Darling, it's all right? It's all right. He'll infect you with lies. What have you been telling her? He's concerned about you, darling. Come on. We're going to go to the hospital now. I know what I know. You'll not escape me. You'll never escape. What is it with you and Hutchins? How the hell should I know? The man's delirious and he's got a fever. I don't just mean today. This hostility's gone on a long time. Is this something that you're not telling me, Grant? Gabe, it's no secret that the man blames me for Ryan's death. Because I protected my mother. But he can't blame me any more than I already blame myself. Todd, what do you think the problem is? Your mom tells me that you broke Ryan's picture. Is that true? It was an accident. No, it wasn't. You and Ryan were very close, weren't you? We cheated things with you. Ryan and Stephen used to play ball together. It's okay. none of your business what we did. I don't like the way you're talking to me. Why are you so angry at your mom, Stephen? I'm not. I never even see her. What are you talking about? I'm with you all day. No, you're not. You're with Kirkland. Just last Saturday. We went to see a movie together, didn't we? Just the two of us. And last night, I played that video game with you. Two times in a whole week. It's nothing. What about your dad, Stephen? Stephen's dad is in London. He's in London. He sends me stuff. I was gonna live with him. But then I had to come home because we were going... We were supposed to. I hey, hate Ryan! You ruined everything! Carl must die. 
He could destroy you. Destroy him first. Greg, huh? You okay? Sure. Sure. Why, well, I enjoyed reminiscing earlier, Gabe. Yeah. Same here. You know, I just remembered something I gotta do. Uh, tell me, can we pick this up tomorrow, maybe? Yeah, yeah, I'll be here. Okay. Captain. They'll yeah. Call for you on five. Okay, I'll be right there. The mayor's off. Right. We'll see you tomorrow. Look forward to it. You want Victoria, don't you? Then do it. Kill him. There's no time for this, right? I won't hear any more. Carl, you're sick. You're overrun. You're gonna see a doctor. Excuse me, my husband is ill. I, I have a cold. He's having trouble breathing. I would have taken him to ER, but I, I would like to see our regular physician. Who usually takes care of you, sir? Well, my wife, and she does a smashing job of it, but, but she does tend to overreact a bit, don't you? John man? Hudson? Uh, yes, uh, I'll get him for you now. Come on, let's sit down. There's no time for this, bitch. Brian needs me. Brian needs help. He needs, he needs me to defend him, you know. My boy, I have to help. My boy. Oh. And be the fiber optic light. Morgan, make sure the gas is maintained at one milliliter. Maintaining at one. There it is. You see it? I see the mass to the left. Biopsy forceps. Good work, people. Thank you very much. I'll take it from here. Thanks for helping me out in there. Morgan. Look, I, 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 uh, I cannot do this anymore. And neither can you. Morgan, can't we, can't we at least talk what, what, about this? What are we going to talk about? You've made your choice. You're getting married. Morgan. And, look, now look, look. If, if, if you want to stay here at Bay City General, that's fine. Really. I'll go someplace else. You can't go. Where, where would you go? Well, what, does it really matter to yes, you? Yes, it matters. You can't just give up your residency, Morgan. Look, I won't let you. Nothing that we discuss is going to prevent what almost went down in there. You hear me? We cannot work together anymore. It's too risky, period. Morgan, please don't go. Goodbye, Courtney. Morgan, I'm, I'm falling in love with you. Hey, Evans. Don't play games with me. I'm not. I'm not. I, I didn't realize what was happening at first. I thought I just liked you and that we were friends. Look, you don't have to give me a bunch of sweet words on account of my ego. I'm fine. I've been through this before. Believe me. I'm not, I'm not jerking you around, Morgan. I, you, you just have to realize that Andrew and I have been together since we were kids, and I, I've never really been with anyone else, not, not seriously. And, and so when I started having feelings about you, I, I didn't know what to do with them. I, I tried pushing them away at first, and then I got engaged to Andrew, and I thought maybe that would make it stop, but it didn't. I dream about you, Morgan. I dream about making love with you. You have big problems with Andrew, so, look, it's natural for you to fit fantasize about better things, about being with somebody else. So it, don't let it fool you. It certainly doesn't mean that you're in love with me. Well, I, I, I've been trying to tell myself that for weeks. <laughs> that, that when I see you and my heart rate doubles, it's nothing. 
that when you touch me and I, and I want to press against you, that it, it, it's nothing. That when something good happens and it's you I want to tell, it's nothing. But it's not nothing, Morgan. And you know that. You've known that for a while. We belong together. All I know is you're Maggie Corey, and your family is loaded, and they're gonna come through. And if they don't? That's their problem. So what's it like being a Corey? Well, right now, it sucks. You got a big family, right? They must, uh, want you back. Probably don't even know I'm gone yet. Well, don't worry. They will. What are you going to do? You want money, right? Big bucks? Well, it's going to take them a little time to get it together. Have you called them? Have you spoken to my grandmother? Why don't you just concentrate on keeping your mouth shut, and I'll take care of the business. You don't understand. My Aunt Paulina, she's married to a cop, and, and, and if you hurt me, he's going to know it. Your aunt? Yeah. What did you say her name was? Paulina. She lives with a cop? Yeah. Joe Carlino, he's her fiancé. Why? Yeah, I just uh, figured that a rich girl like that would end up with a cop on the beat, I guess. He happens to be a detective. Ooh, I'm really scared. You should be. Besides, my grandmother is married to a guy who has mob connections. What, like Al Capone? <laughs> yeah, I'm serious. He's killed people. I, I, I know he has, or he's had them killed. But my family won't let you get away with this. They will if they want you back. Well, things don't always happen as you plan them. You know, what if the cops track you down, or what if you don't get the ransom money? I'll tell you something. And they won't get you back in one piece. Do you think we should go to the restaurant? And what? Yeah. Huh? Trying to talk Franny out of doing what she's made up her mind she's gonna do anyway? It's too late, Paulina. When my mom died, Franny took it upon herself that she was going to do the right thing by Sophia. And if Sophia stands up to her, she's already run away once. Forget about it. Sophia tries anything, Franny pulls in the heavy artillery. Zia Paula and Zia Maria. And let me tell you something. I think she's bad. Those two make her look like a hippie. Well, she is pretty straight-laced, your aunt. But I understand some of her positions, you know. She, she loves you very much and wants what's best for you no matter what. Hey. Hey, hey, hey. No matter what she thinks about you, or what she thinks about us having this baby like this, it does not change how I feel. Good. Good. What, are you having second thoughts about marrying into this crazy family? <gasps> I am marrying you, Joe, not your family. Uh, I got news for you. You marry one Carlino, you marry them all. <laughs> well, I, I love you. Mm -hmm. I love your dad and your sister. What's one or two? <laughs> Or three crazy aunties, right? Try seven. Uh, Not including my mother's side. Uh, well, I'll take my chances. Get over here. Uh, Hello, Mr. So, uh, did you enjoy your stay with uh, Joey and uh, Paulina, Aunt Franny? Sophia, do you have any idea what you put me through? No, but I'm sure you're going to tell me. I thought you were dead. I'm sorry to disappoint you. Oh, Sophia Teresa, what you did was selfish and inconsiderate. Running away without leaving me a note. You wouldn't do that to a stranger, let alone someone who loves you and cares for you. And Franny, I just wanted to see Joey, okay? And meet his fiance. And you couldn't discuss it with me? No. No, I couldn't, because I knew what you would say. No. Like you say about everything. Look, Aunt Franny, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry that I upset you, but um, I, I just didn't know what else to do. Test it, daughter. I called the police. I called the priest. I pulled him out of mass. I can't believe this. I called the Sisters of the Sacred Heart. Sister Immaculata is saying her prayers for your immortal soul. Aunt Franny, my soul is perfectly fine, right. I'm telling you. I'm Nick. Nick Terry. It's, uh, it's nice to meet you. Please tell me uh, not about you. Uh, and Franny, Nick and I, we... I'm going to say goodbye. 
We got a plane to catch, the 1107 to LaGuardia. I'm sorry, Aunt Franny, I am not going back to New York with you. Ryan. I do, too. No, you don't. You miss him, and I miss him, too. Come here. Stop kissing me all the time. You know, sometimes Mommy needs a hug, too. I don't want a hug. I want you to leave me alone. What you care about is Kirkland anyways. Take me to the park, buy him stuff. Why don't you move out with Kirkland? Leave me alone. Stephen, how about if we start by agreeing that everybody's having a hard time right now? Not just you. Tell me, what's the deal with your little brother? Kirk gets everything he wants. Grant comes to visit him all the time. It's not fair. Grant is, uh, Kirkland's father. He's my ex-husband. And you hate him. I don't hate him. And how come you let me teach you to the pond today? I just feel that Grant has been very generous with his time. Then how come you won't let me be with him? Tell you what, Stephen, I'd like to talk to your mom for a minute, and I'd like you to talk to Wendy, okay? Wendy? Wendy, this is Stephen. Wendy has some games for you to play. To see if I'm crazy. <laughs> to see how smart you are. And if you like sports or drawing or... Sports? Drawing? Great. Come on. It's okay, sweetheart. I'll be right here. See what I mean? He's angry. Yeah. And believe me, it's a lot better for him in the long run and for you. Under the circumstances, if he weren't acting out right now, we'd be in some real trouble. <laughs> yeah, the problem is I just wonder if we're going to live through this. You're both angry, hurt, scared. The only difference is that Stephen is a child and he just has a hard time articulating his feelings. No matter what we do, it's going to take some time. I just want to be able to talk to him, you know? I just don't want to scream all the time. You obviously didn't choose this route. There are not that many single mothers that have. But if there's any way that you could get some help... No, no, it's, it's, it's not that. I mean, I have Bridget who lives with us, and my mother just lives if down the road. If there was a man available, you mentioned your father, perhaps your ex-husband. Doctor, you're not saying I need a man in the house, are you? I think that if Stephen had a man to spend some time with right now, it would help him. No, I, I see what you're saying. Stephen needs a father figure. May I help you? Yes, I was told that, um, that, that Carl Hutchins had been admitted. Um, I'll check that for you. I'll need his room number, please, and his prognosis, see how he's doing. That's not too much trouble. <laughs> Once again, take another breath. <laughs> it's a cold. It's just a nuisance. Please don't talk. Just relax, okay? I'm going to order a chest service. No, no, extra. It's Carl, not necessary. Carl, if you don't cooperate, what is this? Bronchitis? Of course it's bronchitis. I won't know until I see the films, but my guess is pneumonia. Pneumonia? That's a two-dollar word for a cold. Now, look, I have a shower. I say, I feel for the... Don't. Just take it easy yeah, there. Yeah, that's why you're so lightheaded. I got up. I got up too fast. I'm going to get you all... down to radiology as soon as I can, and I want to keep you here overnight. No, John. Please don't, don't do this to me. Don't do this to me. Ryan needs me. He's trying to warn me. Ryan is dead, darling. To you, but not to me. What is this, John? It's part of the pneumonia. What is it? It's just delirious from the fever. We'll keep an eye on it. I'm awfully grateful you're here. Thank you. Go get that wheelchair. I'll be right back. Uh, wait, wait, whoa. I, uh, what, what's wrong? Well, I, 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 uh, I don't know, but... Uh, but, but what? I can't. I'm, we can't. I'm sorry. Until I know that this is real, I cannot. Well, uh, I... I told you how I feel about you, Morgan. Um, I hate you. 
when we were together at Christmas. And you made that chocolate fondue for us. And then I fell asleep in your arms. That, that's when I knew. We belong together. We fit. You're engaged. Well, I, I'm not gonna marry him, Morgan. I, I wanna be with you. care of Andrew. Okay. Uh, I've, I've got a break coming up. I'll go home, tell him that it's off. No, Engage no, you off. won't. Well, I have to tell him, Morgan. I'll tell him. No, no, you, you shouldn't Courtney, go. Courtney, he's violent. I'm gonna tell him. Okay? In fact, I'm gonna go over there and I'm gonna tell him right now. Graham. Hi. Hi. What are you doing here? Uh, a, fr a friend is ill. Are you all right? Where's, where's Kirkland? Oh, Kirkland's at home with Bridget. Um, I had a bad fight with Stephen. He smashed Ryan's picture. Oh, no, not deliberately. Yeah, I think it was deliberately. So I, I brought him in for... Actually, we both came in for a little counseling. I, I hit him. I don't know, it's been a bad day. It's been a really bad day. It's all right. It's all right. Okay. Um, honey, have you seen Maggie? Uh, her grandfather has to be admitted to the hospital today for an overnight. No, and no one seems to know where she is. She didn't show up for a candy striping shift. anyone? I wouldn't snitch. Who would I tell? Would you really kill me if the cops found out and my family couldn't come up with the money? You're gonna kill me anyway, aren't you? Because now I can identify you. Why don't you just do yourself a favor and just shut up about it? Look, if you let me go, I... I I, I, nothing will happen. I'll, I'll make something up I, that, that I went to New, to Chicago for a party for New Year's. Anything. Or I could get the money. Yeah, I have a trust fund. And you'll drive me back to Bay City. We'll pick up the money. You'll just drop me off. Nothing will happen. I won't tell anyone. Everything will be great, I promise. Oh. not going. I'm staying here with Joey. And his pregnant fiance. Oh, that's a good thing your mama's not alive. My mother would love Paulina. Now you go get your things. We got a taxi waiting. You don't listen. Why don't you listen to me? Look, uh, ma'am, Sophia's over 18. You cannot force her to go back with you. Uh, young man, I will thank you not to meddle in a family matter. Uh, um, but, he, but he is family. I, I mean, he will be. Soon. Um, and, and Franny, I, I, I would like you to meet my, uh, my fiance. Tonight, it's must-see TV Tuesday on NBC, starting with an all-new Wings, followed by News Radio with guest star Dennis Miller. Then it's Frasier, The John Larroquette Show, and an all-new edition of Dateline NBC. Tonight.